You're listening to the Running Up the Score podcast. We'll start off with the NBA Finals, okay? Uh, just because it's fresh in our minds. It happened last night. Um, there's a lot of talk. There's, there's a lot to talk about. First off, I wanted to talk about the other day, uh, Game 3, and what happened in the stands. Um, now, last week, I spoke about, you know, Drake setting a precedent for the rest of the fans that, you know, have enough money to buy uh, courtside seats. Now, there was an incident the other day. Kyle Lowry went into the stands uh, to try to save the basketball from going out of bounds. Uh, He landed on a seat, and then some guy pushes Kyle Lowry. It later came out the next day that that some guy was a investor. So, shareholder, uh, you know, minority owner, however you want to put it, um, of the Warriors. So, he's banned for life. Uh, he's ban- Well, everybody wants him to be banned for life. He's banned for a year. Uh, and is fined five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there, because I need to throw in the two cents. Right you throw now. in because two cents. you know, folks in the NBA. Obviously, there's no barrier. We've talked about this over and over. I've seen you've tweeted things about that as well. Uh, that's not gonna change anything in this game. Uh, you know, the courtside seats are part of the experience when you go to an NBA game. Uh, my problem is is how the NBA handled this. Now I know he's a part owner, and you know I I can tell you I'm taking this straight from even Colin Coward, uh, and he said that even the average of fan will go about to their games. You know the the middle class family that can maybe go to two or three games a year, even you know the poor class where they can get maybe one game a year, and if they were to touch an NBA player. It's banned for life. Yeah. There's no questions asked. Banned for life. Now, this gentleman, who was part owner of the Golden State Warriors, which is embarrassing, by the way. Uh, let's just let's just get that out there real quick. That th- This is just an embarrassing situation for yourself. You know, uh, you're getting spotlight right now in the negative impact. And for you to sit there and believe that you have the right to touch an NBA player is just atrocious. Uh, obviously, they're a performer. Uh, they get paid a lot of money to perform and be nationally televised, and these are big-time games. If you to throw nonsense like that out there, like that's not something I want to watch on television. I don't need to see you pushing an NBA player. That is the last thing I care about. You, no matter how rich you are and everything you're all about, you know, I've heard his name over and over. I still can't remember it. And I told this is not the first time that we've been on this show. And there have been names of, you know, fans of some sort that made an impact in some way. But I'll never know their name because I, I just don't care. I don't care who you are. Don't, don't, I have no interest. I didn't put on, you know, what was it, uh, ABC, right, or NBC? Yeah, what, what was it, it? ABC. AB, I don't put on ABC to watch you pushing Kyle Lowry. I put, it, I put it on to watch Kyle Lowry play some defense, knock down some threes, watch these two teams go at it. Watch Kawhi Leonard, who is probably one of the best competitors I've ever seen. That's why I put on that channel. Not to watch you push Kyle Lowry. And there's been a big issue here and a big problem from my standpoint that this man should be banned for life. Not this one year crap. That's exactly what it is. It's crap. Now this is where, this is kind of what, perfect segue into what I, what I wanted to talk about. It's just, you know, you're allowing a guy like Drake, okay? Now we spoke about it last week. Well, it's and different. I kind of gave you. It's, it's different. I kind. I, I kind of gave you a little bit of a, a taste of it, but now it's just. Now it's just perfect, okay? Because you're allowing a guy like Drake to stand on the court, to you know trash talk the players, to be literally face to face with Draymond Green, okay? Um, put his hands on Nick Nurse. Now I know obviously it was you know in a way of you know celebrating with him. 
But still, doesn't he? Like, Drake is still a fan. I he's he paid, not. He has no nothing to do with the Raptors I'm other than sure he's, he's from Toronto. I'm pretty sure he's putting money towards like their practice facility and stuff like that. So like, again, and I, don't get me wrong, the but, part owner of the but you know, again, the Warriors, yeah, like, he he's giving money the, towards the, understandable towards the Warriors. I so. absolutely understand what you're going at there, but it's just a different standpoint. You know, Drake has sat there, and you know, this man is very friendly. Don't be fooled. By the tweets and the you know the the immature things that he does on Twitter, uh, don't be fooled by that. Um, no, I, and he's he's very friendly with a lot I, of these players. I understand. I mean, he's that. gone out with LeBron James. Yeah, you know, he and has had, a tattoo you know, of Steph Curry and Kevin Durant on his arm. But I, I like I understand that. But it's also like, you know what? In my standpoint, I think there really should be a barrier. And I know you brought it up before. I, I think there should be just because. It's not going to take away from the experience of the game because you know what? Everybody else in that arena about say say if there's, you know, how how many people would be in it? So about 20 20,000 people, okay? Say 20,000 people. Only about 2,000 people of that, if that, maybe even less are around the court, okay? So to move those guys back a few feet is it really going to change the experience? Because the other 18,000 people are experiencing the same thing from all different seats of this arena. And they're, they're having just as much fun as it would be to sit courtside. Now, trust me, everybody would love and dream to sit courtside, to sit behind home plate, to sit at the 50-yard line. See, this is where... That's, this is like, in every other sport, there's a barrier. And everybody else, you know, everybody experiences the same exact thing. And it's the same great experience whether you're 10 feet away or, you know, a foot away. The problem with this is that Adam Silver needs to get control of his league. And it's embarrassing. As the commissioner of the National Basketball Association, it is very, very embarrassing to have this kind of situation. Because you're right. Does Drake have any right to be putting his hands on a coach? No, there was a whole debate. Everyone was talking about it. It's nonsense that I had to sit there and drive to work and listen about that. It's nonsense. This is what I'm saying. Adam Silver needs to get some control of his league. I don't want to sit there on, you know, Saturday morning after the NBA Finals game is over and talk about what happened between a fan and a player. I don't care about that. I want to know what happened in the game. I want, you know, not everybody was able to have the privilege to be able to go out and be able to watch that game in full last night. Now, granted, you know, uh, most people did, uh, obviously being the NBA Finals, but there are some few out there that weren't, didn't get an opportunity. I don't need to hear about, you know, what Drake did in throughout the game, and I don't need to know about what this gentleman had done to Kyle Lowry. Now, I want to know what happened with the game, why the Toronto Raptors, who, like we talked about on our last show, don't have a single lottery pick on their entire roster are one game away from being NBA champions. That's a story I would like to know about and how they're able to find ways to defeat the Golden State Warriors and have the success that they have. Now, everyone could sit, you know, simply sit there quickly and say, you know, oh, well, Kevin Durant's out and, you know, Klay Thompson didn't play a game or two. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff I want to know about. I don't need to know about the issues going on with fans, and that goes all the way up to the commissioner of the National Basketball Association. Mr. Silver needs to go out there and put a stand on this. You know, everyone calls Roger Goodell in the NFL like the biggest criminal in the world because he sets precedence. Now, oh well, to the average fan. That's life. This is what happens. There are rules. Well, I mean, now, just... Adam Silver is letting this league be lost. First off, you have, you have players basically controlling their fate at all times, which has been a whole thing. That I never remember seeing ever. I really never remember ever seeing like players controlling every aspect. I'm hearing LeBron James coaching himself. Like this is, you're losing your league. Your league is starting to become a clown show. And whether anyone would like to think it or not, the NBA is losing ratings. It doesn't. It doesn't show. People don't want to sit there and, you know, you have ESPN talking about it nonstop. Does not change it. Does not change the ratings. Last night I did not watch Game Four of the NBA Finals. I did not watch it. I didn't get it. I honestly did not get a chance to watch the game at all. Did not see what happened. Did not see how the Toronto Raptors were able to win that game by 13, and they were winning for the most part of that game as well. And I, I had seen like little, you know, the score updates and stuff like that because I'm interested, of course. But I didn't watch it. I watched the second half. And the problem is, is that 
you got to get control of this league. It is starting to become a clown show. It is not a competitive league anymore. It's more becoming like a show. And well, like like a not really like a show, like a you know like a uh, like a drama show yeah. along the lines. And I'm here to watch you know competitors. You know Ka- you know Kawhi Leonard is the best. I mean, he had said something. I think just as much as last night. You know, I don't I don't win for anybody or I don't play for anybody. I don't play for like the fan. You know, like he I just play to win. I, I just want to win. Yeah. You know, I just want to win and go home and get paid. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. And you know, like. Basically what you were saying, you know, just with Drake and everything like that. Like, just could you imagine a fan sitting, like, literally in the huddle of, you know, a defensive coordinator talking to his defense? Could you imagine, uh, you know, a guy like Drake going up to Bill Belichick and, you know, giving him a massage? Could, like, can we, like, really talk about this? Like, seriously. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. But it is, and I don't know if anything's going to change ever, really, because the NBA loves their money, and they know that they can charge a lot of money for, you know, sitting on the court. Um, But just overall, uh, you know, talking about the game last night, this is is setting up pretty perfect uh, for Kevin Durant. And I say that because his team's down 3-1. I say that because I have a feeling he's going to show up in Game 5. Now, if the Warriors come back from 3-1 and they win this series, which is going to be hard, but if Kevin Durant comes back and they win the finals after being down 3-1 to a guy of, like, of Kawhi Leonard's caliber, which we've been seeing all through this playoffs, he's unbelievable. Could you imagine the the storyline? Kevin Durant would be like God to everybody. Well, to Golden State fans. Well, I, I mean, just look what happened with with uh, LeBron being down three one to the seventy three win, the Warriors. Um, he comes back. Well, I mean, not that he was gone, but he took them back from three one. Wins it now. Everybody's like, "Oh, look what this did to his legacy." You can't say anything any any more about LeBron James. This and that, blah blah blah. This would be huge for Kevin Durant's legacy. But also, if he doesn't come back, he could say the team lost four one to the Raptors and he didn't play, and that's the reason. So it, and you see what it's coming down to in the NBA. It's folks. all about storylines. I mean, you're listening to him talk and you hear. But how it's like it's all about the player, and yeah, and that, that's the one thing that you've seen low key. And everyone wants to talk about Kawhi Leonard, but it isn't just Kawhi Leonard being the reason. Now it'd be nice to be able to talk about Kyle Lowry, and not about him and with the fan and talk about how well he's played, as well Fred as Marcus Gasol, yeah, exactly, Van Vliet, Vliet, all these. Yeah, Siakam, he's yep. been playing like Toronto has been playing very well overall. Now the whole team has been playing very well. I feel like Fred Van Vliet. Uh, before getting hurt yesterday, I, I mean, all through the the finals and even the playoffs, he's come up with big shots, big shots. And in Game Three, he came up with a huge three pointer that basically stopped that game with like a minute and a half left. Put the game away. He's come up with huge shots. He got elbowed in the eye last night, bleeding, uh, knocked out half his tooth or whatever it was. He's fine. Uh, uh, you know, but he'll be b- the point but of what I was trying to come across was that this is a team game, and that you know we're talking about people's legacy. I don't care about LeBron James's legacy. I just don't. People I do. really don't. You know, obviously, you know, you have leaders. Michael Jordan was a great leader. Now everyone wants to say he was the greatest basketball player ever to live. Who knows? That is so debatable. I've seen some freakish athletes like LeBron James. These guys are freaks when it comes to like their athletic ability and their ability to play the game of basketball. That's I mean, another like I know it's, I know it's a whole different <laughs> that's standpoint. A whole different. But the point is is that you know Michael Jordan led his team to six championships. He led a team. Now, I want to see that trait in a player. I don't need to see their legacy. I just need to see their leadership qualities and how they're able to play the game. Michael Jordan was able to lead by example. A very tough defender. You'll never realize that. You'll never read about that. But Michael Jordan was one of the best defenders on top of being one of the best scorers. Ever to live. That's why he has the legacy that he has. 
but I don't Kobe care Bryant. about. I understand, but I don't care about his legacy. I just don't. You know, I, I no, really I, don't. Listen, ha- and I I'll tell you right now, if you put Michael Jordan with Shaq in the early on a career, Michael Jordan would have had ten championships. So I understand what you're saying about Kobe Bryant, but we all. I mean, you, the fact that you're even mentioning him right now is is, is mind boggling. Like, how is a, it mind boggling? He's the top three player in the in NBA history, Kobe Bryant. Again, this is this is way off. This is gonna this is because I could go for days talking about Kobe Bryant being a top three player. But that's the thing. But like, that's not here but my, there. But again, it goes right back to what I'm trying to say: is that this is a team game. They all are. Every competitive sport that you watch professionally, you know, uh, I actually just mixed those words up completely. Every professional sport that you watch, you know, compete is basically these are team games. I don't need to care about someone's legacy. I don't need to care about Kevin Durant's legacy. I don't care. I don't care what happens to him. Don't care about if this makes him look good, if this makes him look bad. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter to me. That's irrelevant. This is a team game. It always has been. And watching the Toronto Raptors play the kind of team basketball that I've been watching them play, and I, I didn't even need to watch last night to fully understand exactly what I was able to watch. I saw, no doubt, a player that sat there and, you know tried to take over, like Steph Curry putting up whatever it was in game three, like 47 points. It was some crazy, and he shot very well. So he played a great game. Good for you, Steph Curry. But this is a team game. And when you have a guy that's dominating the paint like Marcus Gasol has been, and then Kawhi Leonard has been an incredible defender, a great two-way player, both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, Van Vliet has done his share of just, you know, making big plays uh, you know, they, again, this is a team that we're talking about, and that's what's so impressive, and that's why I'm becoming a fan of the Toronto Raptors, and I want to see them win the NBA Finals. Even when t- uh, the Golden State Warriors had won their championships, there is no doubt those were team basketball performances. You know, it didn't just take Steph Curry by himself putting up all those points. Klay Thompson had to make his shots. Draymond Green had to get those steals, rebounds, blocks. Uh, you know. It really comes down to you have to play a full game, full team basketball to win in this league. Now, everyone's been blinded by that, by watching LeBron James play for the last 10 years. It's understandable. I would feel the same way. I even started to maybe kind of nudge that way myself on the basis that, wow, this man is unbelievable. He is leading a team to the NBA Finals every year. But then all of a sudden he loses and you're blaming the rest of the team. And it had nothing to do with him and his leadership. That is a big problem. Everyone is accountable for losing a championship. So you're going to tell me if the Golden State Warriors lose this NBA Finals, let's not blame Steph Curry. He put up 47 points. He was he was great. Let's not blame him. But now we're pointing fingers at who we're blaming. Blame the organization as a whole. The Golden State Warriors lost because the Golden State Warriors didn't do it right. And the Toronto Raptors are doing it right. Now, can Golden State come back and win this with Kevin Durant coming back? Of course. Will Kevin Durant seem like a hero? Absolutely. But I'll know from watching basketball for the last 20 years of my life, and 20 plus, I should say, this is a team game. It always has been. I played the game growing up my entire life. I know how it, I know what it takes to win. It doesn't take just one superstar to be lights out from the field. Because that superstar, after putting all that effort on the offensive side of the ball, has to go right back down to the other end and give the same kind of effort. And a lot of players in the NBA do not do that. Which is crazy. Because you make millions upon millions of dollars. So, if you need a break, because obviously basketball is a, you know, bench is a big part of it, and how good a bench is played, and I've seen those excerpts on ESPN where they talk about the bench points, and I think it's a great stat. Because this is a team. A full team game. That's what it's going to take to win basketball games. No matter who you are, you're all human. You get tired. You, You can't play a full game in the NBA. You just can't. Other guys got to step up. And that's when it comes down to the organization and being able to get it right. Now, no one should now I'm not saying no one should have blamed LeBron James for all these championships being lost, but yeah, you blame the Cleveland Cavaliers organization. You know, and they and I you know, I've talked about this even it goes all the way back to now we're going into the draft. I'll get away from the NBA finals for a second. I'll go right to the draft for you for a sec. You know, and Zion Williamson. He's about to be the number one overall pick in the draft. And he's going to go to the Pelicans. Now there is plenty of people out there. Plenty. That are requesting that this man drop himself out of the draft. 
because of the way the Pelicans run their organization. It, it's it's not run correctly. Ask Anthony Davis. Just go ahead and ask him. The guy's been a vocal point of that organization for a very long time. No supporting cast. Now, you, I'm not going to blame the other players on his team. I'm not going to blame Anthony Davis for being a bad leader, which can also come into play a little bit. But you have to blame the organization as a whole. There isn't pointing the finger at one single person. And that that's that's the biggest problem you see when you're looking at people trying to analyze things in the NBA. You know, let's blame this player because he did this. Let's blame this player because he did this. You blame the team. It's an entire team it takes to win an, an NBA game. And if you lose an NBA game, then you lost as a team. Don't care if you shot, you know, 80% from the field. Don't care if you didn't miss a free throw and you shot 15 of them in a game. Great performance. But you didn't win. You need to make plays late. You need to have clutch moments. Michael Jordan, you couldn't get more clutch than he was. A very good leader, led by example, and backed it up. LeBron James, are we going to say he's not clutch? No, I'm never going to say LeBron James is not as clutch. Or what, you know, and people, again, trying to overanalyze the player. But the Chicago Bulls were a very good team. It wasn't just Michael Jordan. And people, you know, go look at the head coach of the Golden State Warriors. He was a bench player. And he was a great three-point shooter as well. Probably a big reason why Steph Curry is as good of a three-point shooter as he is. When you have a coach like Steve Kerr. And again, that was part of that team. So, to critique and try to analyze and look at legacies in the NBA is nonsense. It's nonsense. You can't be made off of, you know, how, how many championships and everything you want. Show me you're a great leader. Show me you know how to win as a team. You don't need to overdo everything. I've seen Russell Westbrook. He's going to break records for triple doubles. Guys don't want anything. So how good of a leader are you? You know, you need to have trust in your teammates. That is the biggest part of being a leader, is trusting your teammates. The ball does not need to be in your hands at all times. Now, granted, part of his triple doubles are assists, but a big part of this is, you know, again, you look at the, you go watch an Oklahoma City game, and who has the ball in his hands, even if you just randomly turned on the television, you're going to see Russell Westbrook with the ball. It should not be like that. And, you know, granted, he could sit there and say, oh, I don't have anybody else. Yeah, you do. These are National Basketball Association players. They got drafted by an organization. A head coach has watched the film and has watched him at practice and believes he earned a spot on your roster. He's good enough to play the game. Promise you that. You probably played with players like that in high school, maybe even in college. Guys that you didn't think had, you know, the the ability... To take care of business is the best way to put it. And basically get the job done. You're playing with professionals. You're not the only professional on this court. You know, and I say this for all the big time players. Don't go around pointing the finger at who on my team didn't do the right thing to win the championship. You can point the finger at yourself just as much. And that's the kind of fan I've always been. And a lot of fans are blinded by that by watching ESPN and watching all these excerpts talking about, oh, how LeBron James was so great and how he needs a team to surround him. All right, well, then if you believe that, then you blame the organization. You don't sit there and blame the certain players on his team because they're all professionals. There's a reason why they're in the NBA. And, I, I again, I've always had one of those, you know, it's, it's always bothered me because you, you're, you're misunderstood about how this game is played by watching guys like, you know, LeBron James and Russell Westbrook and how great they've been. And don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything away from these guys. LeBron James is a great player. Russell Westbrook is a great player. They're great. Probably Hall of Famers. But part a big part of winning championships in this league is being a leader. And to have faith in the rest of your team. Because that's how you're going to win games. The ball always has to be moving. I've been taught that in every level of basketball. The ball has constantly got to be moving. From teammate to teammate. Or by dribbling, find ways to get the open man. And then make your shots. You don't make your shot, keep the confidence level up and continue to play. And play on the other end with the confidence. And like, you know, we're going to go into a segment with Pete Rose in a little bit about how the confidence level can affect a person's play. And if someone's in a slump, how that will affect someone's play. It's it's 100% truth. You know, you need to have confidence And the way you get confidence is you get the confidence from the leader of your team. And that's something I don't think I've seen 
from Russell Westbrook. And I don't think I've seen it from LeBron James. Because just from their interviews and how they go about themselves, it's almost like the finger should be getting pointed elsewhere besides themselves. And because they think the finger is being pointed at themselves, which it should be. The finger should be pointed at you. You need to be a better leader. You need to find different ways to win games. When those clutch moments come at the end of basketball games, find out the right person to do the job. Sometimes it's not the person the other team expects you to do. But that's what makes it a great call. And it goes all the way back up to a head coach and went back to what I was saying before about how a player is overtaking these teams. You've been listening to the Running Up the Score podcast. For more Running Up the Score, go follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at RUTS Sports.